this week's edition of Tom's Trains. Although it's not actually called Tom's Trains anymore, I decided to change the name to The Logo Builder. Uh, first of all, this differentiates me from a few other channels with a similar name to Tom's Trains, and it also much more accurately reflects what I want to achieve with the channel, which is to encourage people to build kit locomotives, wagons, and coaches rather than relying on ready to run. I've also changed the name of the Instagram account, so if you're already subscribed to that, nothing changes, it's just a name change. So it's the Loco Builder on Instagram and also the Loco Builder on YouTube. This week though it hasn't been Locos, it's actually been carriages and following on from last week when I did the Silver Jubilee, I've been doing a little bit more work on that. Earlier on in the week I was soldering up the buffer beams, so let's have a look and see how I got on with that. I've cut already the buffer beam assemblies, it's just 4mm angle brass. I used my Proxon chop saw to do that, formed a couple of angles on there and it fits the back of the coaches very nicely. Now I'm just tinning the back of the buffers themselves with some low melt solder. I go in first with the flux and then with a little bit of solder. This is where it's really handy to have a temperature controlled soldering iron because I've got my iron set now to about 220 degrees. Any hotter than that and you're liable to melt these parts, they're quite small so we don't want to cause any damage so that's why it's very very handy to have, if you can get one anyway, a temperature controlled iron. So flux first and then a little bit of low melt just on the back to tin those parts there. Now I'm moving on to the buffer beams themselves. You can see I've drilled a couple of holes. They're correctly spaced to take the buffers themselves. And when you're soldering brass to white metal, what you have to do is first tin the brass with normal solder. So I'm using my regular 145 solder. I've turned the iron up probably to around 320 or so now just to put that uh, 145 solder onto the buffer beam. I do the same for both sides and it's just a very small coating just to ensure that when we apply the white metal part we get an amalgam of the two different types of solders ensuring that the white metal part sticks to the buffer beam. I'm now ready to actually carry out the buffer beam assembly itself so one of my pre-tinned buffers is going on the back there. First I'm applying a little bit of flux and then I'm going to push in the buffer beam into the hole. It's quite a tight fit, which is good. I want a friction fit and I'm just ensuring that the top of the buffer is level with the buffer beam itself before I go ahead and solder it. Pushing down now from the back and then I've turned the iron probably to around 270, something like that, and applying heat from the back. That ensures a nice neat joint and I think you could see there that the solder was just coming through the top of the hole there. Just checking to make sure that the buffer's level, it's obviously not so I've got the pliers and I'm just applying a small amount of twist. You can get away with a tiny amount if you apply too much twist you're liable to snap the buffer head itself because they're quite fine really and cast metal doesn't take sheer, strength, sheer forces very well. I'm just doing the second buffer now exactly the same way as I did before applying heat from the back, just a little bit of flux going in there, in with the iron. You'll hear a nice fizz when you do this. You can see it's nice and shiny and the solder has flowed right through. Obviously decided I need a little bit more there and that's on. Looks pretty level to me. Now I'm just going in with the file to clean up the cast lines and that's how you do the buffers. Right, having done the buffer beam assemblies then we're ready now to move on to the flooring system itself and if I didn't show you before the flooring system is actually made up of these aluminium bars. It's around 25mm wide, about 2mm thick and the great thing about this is it's very strong and it's also very lightweight as well. It has the rigidity that I, that I need for the chassis. I've drilled out the holes already as you can see there which fit over the pivot system and I'll show you that later on and now what I need to do is just cut out the plastic card to form the actual floor itself within the coach. So to do that I simply grab my scriber, the best way to cut plastic card I think is with a scriber, this is a Tamiya one, quite an old blade on there uh, but that's absolutely fine and we'll just score across the plastic and try and make straight cuts. So I just line my marks up already there. Try and be as accurate as possible. I've measured the width of the sheet that I need. 
certainly it fits within the coach. And then just score along like so. And the beauty of this is that you're actually removing material rather than trying to cut through it with a knife. So that's one. I've just got three more to do. Once I've done those initial cuts, I just run through again with the scriber, just to ensure they're a bit deeper, like that. That should be enough. And now, just go in with my with my scalpel here and finish off the cuts. Right, that's three equal width sheets of plastic card there. With the excess, just keep that aside for future projects. And now I need to measure the length of these and get them right. So uh, for the long ones here, for the long sections that I'm using, uh, it's 207 millimeters. So I'll just place a mark with my marker pen there. 207 is there. And I just use a set square, a small set square like so, just to rule across, like that. And then again, exactly the same with the scriber. Simply line up with the ruler. Couple of passes, snap. And that should fit. I don't know whether you can see that there's two witness marks there. And that fits perfectly within there. Next stage will be to cut these next two off uh, as well, and then we'll glue the rest of it all together. I've just got one last chassis to glue up now. Uh, the plastic card's all cut and ready. And then I'll show you how the actual system works in practice. Just using super glue to affix the plastic onto the chassis unit itself. And I want to use quite a lot of super glue to ensure a nice strong bond. Place the plastic card on top, ensure that you line it up well. It does get a bit fumy with the super glue itself, but uh, I'm sure health and safety would say to use a well ventilated room or something like that, just use your common sense, obviously. And then I'm just gonna clamp the parts together just while the super glue goes off initially to ensure that nothing moves around. Check all that to make sure Everything is nice and secure. There it is. Right, put that to one side. Put the lid on the glue, we're finished with that. And here is one of the completed coaches with the flooring system next door to it. Let me just explain a few things that make this coach a bit different to the normal coaches that we might build. And that is where the sole bar runs along the edge of the coach here. On normal coaches, that sole bar is visible, but on the streamliner coaches, what they did was they covered them up. They are there, they're just underneath the streamlining, but that makes it a bit difficult when we're building them because we need to figure out some way of being able to get inside the coach. Some people are able to build the coach so that the roof is detachable. For me, that would mean that there'd be quite a big seam line running along the top of the coach, and I wouldn't be very happy with the visual appearance of the coach. Another solution is to break the coach here, just below the chrome plating there. But again, that would leave a seam line and we'd be able to see that once the coach is completed. My solution 
was to just fit the flooring unit in between the two fairings and so what we end up with is a slight compromise where we have a small gap inside the coach and I'll just show you that now. I just pop this floor system inside like that. It just fits on the pivot here which is for the articulation system and then there's four screw holes. I'll just attach a couple of them just to secure the unit in place. Oops. These are quarter inch APA screws. I use APA screws for most of my modelling actually. In that goes. And the same at the back, just one in there. Inside, I hope you can see that there is a small gap actually running just along the side of the coach between the coach side and the floor but actually once the roof's on and once the coach is painted and completed and all the interiors are inside you won't actually see any of that uh, gap there and what it means is that we've got a coach that will be completely seamless throughout and we can get a really nice finish on these I think on these type of streamliner coaches it's really vital to get a beautiful finish because they're going to be a centerpiece for your model so having completed all of the flooring systems, we can now have a look at how we build the interiors. Moving on to the interiors then, they are supplied with the kit. Uh, they come on frets like so. These are the doors and these are the compartment sides. And we also get the bulkheads supplied as well. I've started up making the first one of these, just got the doors soldered on. I think they're slide doors in real life, they would slide either side to save space and then one of the bulkhead ends there. And using the plans that somebody very kindly supplied to me from uh, RM Web, you can actually fit in the interiors like so. And what I'll do is I'll just solder that to the side of the coach so it kind of floats inside and then the floor will be removed from the bottom. The seats will be fitted to the floor, the plastic floor itself. My approach to doing the interiors is really just to have some sort of representation of what's going on in there. These aren't showcase models, so I just want to show a little bit of detail, obviously put the seats in, try and get the correct colour scheme as well, and try and make everything look as, you know, fairly realistic, but uh, not absolutely 100% accurate. That's about it from me. Uh, I'm just going to carry on soldering up these bits, and uh, I hope to see you again in a little while. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little look of what I've been up to this week. We're making some really good progress on these uh, Silver Jubilee coaches now. Um, I hope to have them finished fairly soon actually. We'll get the detail on the outside once I've done the interiors. We'll get the roofs on. I'll probably show you how I attach the roofs and then we'll get it all primed, primed and painted and I'll show you the full painting process because it's quite interesting and in depth on this particular one. But like I say, hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again next week. Please do remember to click subscribe and also check me out on Instagram. It's now The Logo Builder. Thanks very much. Enjoy your modelling this week and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.